Mike Howard. <laughs> FBS. Now then, if you're a regular listener to the show, you may remember back in May, I was looking for Huddersfield Town fans on ops ahead of the big playoff final between Huddersfield and Sheffield United at Wembley. Now, our aim was to take some photos and send them to the club by hook or by crook just to show our support as we couldn't make the game. And the pictures ended up hitting the local newspapers, television and radio stations, as well as them making it onto the motivational DVD for the players for their trip to Wembley. So it gives me great pleasure, especially for the town fans dotted around the knots, particularly those of three Yorks, to welcome a true Yorkshire lad, the legend that is the chairman of Huddersfield Town Football Club, Mr. Dean Hoyle. Dean, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Dean. Now, what an, what an absolutely incredible few weeks it's been. Now, I sat with some of the guys in the Naffy Coffee Shop at Camp Bastion and dug yeah. claw marks into the chair and then unintentionally chewed every nail to, to hide the evidence that it was me making the marks. Probably one of the best but hairiest games I've ever seen in my life with Sheffield United. Yeah. What was the atmosphere like when the players got off the pitch? Uh, it was um, a huge relief. To be honest, it's like I, I'm just sat here talking to Ian Bennett. Actually, I think we're trying to sort his contract out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to be honest, it's like anything else. It's if we'd have failed this season, it'd been the third time I've been chairman and we'd have failed. And fans would have said to me, "Well, yeah, it's okay, Dean, but you keep saying you'll do X, Y, Z, and but we're still in the first division and we'll still be going to Shrewsbury and crawling next year, <laughs> and but we're not. We're going to bigger clubs and and the whole town is just being lifted. Things are rough across here, the recessions and and jobs and money, and it just gives the whole town a boost. But the actual Sheffield game to go to penalties, 22 penalties, and for it to finish in dramatic style. It was incredible, and we missed our first three. So yeah. I'm sat there thinking, oh, what do I have to do? You think, how on earth are you going to pick yourself up? Yeah. But at the same time, with the soldiers being killed from the Huddersfield yeah. area this year, you know, you think that there's worse things in life, and, and you've got to put things in perspective. But regarding football, it's a great boost for everybody, and, um, you know, for the town, for the clubs, for the fans, everybody involved. It's an amazing experience. Obviously, keeping up with the latest news out in Afghanistan can be a little bit of a nightmare with lack of internet, yeah. the odd phone call and things, so trying to keep up with the news is difficult. Yeah. The big question, of course, in everyone's lips is, is Jordan, Jordan Rhodes, because there's yeah. all sorts of rumours flying around. Can you give us any sort of a heads up on that? Well, to be honest, we, we, we all want Jordan to stay because, let's be fair, he's not just a fantastic player. He's such a great guy off the pitch, and his parents did incredibly well to bring such a fantastic guy up. He's had lots of homers moving around the country, yeah. um, but he's close to his roots. Not whether that's uh, Yorkshire or Scotland, but, but, <laughs> but, he's, but he's very close to his roots. And what I would say is we would really, really like him at the club, but mm. he's also got aspirations in Premiership football. Yeah. What I will say, though, if he is going to leave this club, it's got to be at the right money. You yeah. know? Um, we, we, we don't have to sell him. So if he's going to move on, he's got to be at the right money. Will somebody pay that kind of money I require now with only first division experience mm. I'm not quite sure but as I say to Jordan look Jordan you know you are going to bang the goals in the championship you might not get 40 yeah. but you're going to get more than 20 you're going to be a great asset yeah. so it's 22 I think time's on his side yeah. um, I think personally he should be here for another season at least Good. try and do the business in the championship try and take this club forward and then get a dream roof to the premiership but to a to a right club, you know, not someone who's scrapping around at the bottom. And that's my view, and that's all in this. But ultimately, I suppose, unless I sign an industrial line, it doesn't go anywhere, so the pressure's on me, really. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, as well, new sponsor, new shirt, which is great. I'm looking forward to buying that one to get back up. Yeah. Um, new players. Have any players come forward wanting to play for town? Yeah, of course they have. You know, at the end of the day, we're doing lots and lots of negotiations. But remember, you know, the Euros are happening. Players are on holiday. Agents are on holiday. It'll probably start picking up in the next, I'd say, seven to ten days. Yeah. But as we sit here now, we've got lots of players lined up. we just really got to try and negotiate with them and, and try and get the deals done. And it's never so easy, especially when, you know, all the players have got other options. Huddersfield, although we've got our prime list of players, there are also other players we're also looking at. So we probably need to bring a few balls down and um, out of the sky and you know sign a few. But as we sit here now, there's lots of options for us as a club. And we just want to make sure we get the right players who really want to t- try and take this club forward, not just a great payday in the Championship. Is, is the aim to place ourselves firmly in the Championship and spend a bit of time there? Or do you want to do a Southampton's finest and, and rock it through? Well, to be honest, I think it'd be very uh, naive of me to say let's do a Southampton Norwich and, and let's go all the way through. I think the Championship is a very, very tough league. I think when the, the fits just came out, you look at them, you think, my God, we've got Cardiff City away for the first game. That's going to be a really, really baptism of fire for us. And there's some big clubs there. I think what sums it up for me, in the first division, we were probably one of the top four biggest clubs in the Championship. We're probably one of the six smallest clubs. So the gulf 
between those two divisions are huge. But what we have got, they've got momentum, they've got enthusiasm. You know, I, I'm a fan of the club, so I want to drive it on as hard as possible. But we've also got to try and live within our means. And yeah. if you can try and balance all those, you get the right impetus. And at the moment, we are riding the crest of a wave. Yeah. You've got to keep that wave going as long as possible, try and keep your best players, and that's the quality. And we're one season away from, from the dream. Although we're not going to chase it, you just never know, dear. Now, Dean, Sergeant Steve Young, who was with Three Yorks, who are based out here in Ops at the moment, is a Huddersfield lad, a fan now based in JHQ in British Forces Germany, and he actually sparked this chat between us. Uh, he was lucky enough to get back to the UK to go to Wembley and uh, was thinking that we should get the chairman on to the FBS. Basically, what to find out, obviously, from yourself, if you've got, you know, the sort of future ambitions for the club now that we've moved up. You know, Huddersfield is um, um, it's a big town, but it's not a city. I think we've got to remember who we are. And I think um, what we've got to try and do is uh, place ourselves in the centre of the community and try and do the right things and try and make sure we're a good, honest club but doing things the right way. So my ambition, rather than saying we want to be here or we want to be there, I've always said our, our aim is to be first and foremost a championship club, but there's no time scale on when we need to get there. I don't want to put a stake in the ground and say we shall be there in such a time. Yeah. I think it's prudent to say we will do our best to do things the right way. But let's be fair. Getting to the Premiership now from the Championship, when you look at all those clubs, it's a huge task. And we're going to be the underdog in nearly every game this season. Yeah. Um, and, 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 well, that's going to be exciting. So rather than the expectation of Huddersfield are rolling into town and, you know, they're getting paid lots of money, let's give them a, a jolly good kick in. <laughs> you know, now the big guns are going to roll into Huddersfield and it's going to be nice to pitch our wits against these. So for me, for the club, it's nice to be the underdog for a change. We can try and buy the right players. And with a bit of luck, with a gust of wind behind you, you never know where that will take you. But there's one thing for sure, we can't chase a dream. I think that's not good for the future of the club. It would be great to, to really have a good go and let's go Premiership. But I think fans have got to understand and wish what they really want. And I think we've got the club under local ownership. It's on a stable footing. I think it's going well at the moment. But I'm also aware that my honeymoon period will, will come to an end. And when that happens, maybe it's time to pass it on to somebody else. But I think I've done the first bit, which is the uh, the promotion. We're going to try and get the shares back in the stadium. Yeah. We've now purchased our, our first ever training ground, which is fantastic. And I think it'll go for the future. Do you model town on any of the clubs in the Premier League? No, not really. I just think what we've got to do, I think I think when I look at the Premier League, I see so many clubs which are detached from the local fan base. And I think we've got to always remember it's fantastic people jumping on board now and, you know, they want to support us and businesses want to get into us. But let's remember all those fans who, you know, have followed us, all lesser known grounds in the country. Yeah. And let's really remember those businesses that have really rallied behind us in the past. So, no, we don't particularly model on anybody. What we just want to be is a good, honest club with Yorkshire values, and that's our aim. I'll tell you what, this, this is a true story. When uh, the old stadium was demolished, we actually had a piece yeah. of the cow shed outside the back of our house for years. Wow. And it was before my mum, because <laughs> my mum's a real massive fan now, and she got into you know got into yeah. football a few years ago. She actually knows more than my dad, and he's a kind of a guru. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> and there was this piece of cow shed sat behind the house for years and years. She's like, what are you doing with this piece of green wood? And it's like, it's just, just leave it alone. Just, just leave it where it is. It's yeah, fine. Absolutely. But um, yeah, I, I know that <laughs> exactly. I know that you're a lifelong supporter of the club. Now, before you joined the board, obviously, yeah. and got really involved, who was your favourite player? Would you say of all time? I think favourite player. I think there's one or two, but I think um, the one which really stood out, and maybe because I started sporting the club and um, going watching the games live when I was probably about 11, 12 years old. Yeah. I think it was Malcolm Brown. Yeah. yeah. In life, you always look back on things and you always think they're actually better than they were. But I always remember Malcolm Brown running down that terrace side and it just used to be fantastic and the crowd used to kind of blow him along and push him along in the roar and he had a great delivery. It was a fantastic. And I always remember Robin getting on the end of them and those days were good. But I think in most recent times, I've liked people like Barry Orme, Marcus Stewart, oh, yes. you know, so there's some great players. Yeah. And I think at the moment, I think Jordan Rhodes is obviously a great one. Yeah. And not just because he's um, an exceptional talent. He's such a cracking lad as, as a human being. Yeah. And I think he, he gives everybody credit apart from himself. And he's, he's such a fine example to anybody who really wants to get on in life and do the right thing. So there's plenty. But I hey, believe you and me, we've had some poor players as well. But I think those, <laughs> no. anybody who, to me, anybody who will put the shirt on and give 110% for the cause, I think will go down in Huddersfield Town's books and, and the fans will take to them. And every player who we sign, 
I always say to them, look, lad, we've never, ever been able to afford talent here. But what we do recognise is hard work. Yeah. If you put that shirt on and you put 90 minutes worth of graft and you don't have a good game, but you come off knowing you could have done nothing else, you'll do for me and, you'll, and, and the fans will take to you. And I think that's what we understand at Huddersfield. What a great boss you are. If I didn't have two left feet, I'd come and work for you. I'd be trying to get straight through that door. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't so rubbish at playing. Now, just quickly as well, of course, with, with the Euros and everything, who's your money on? I think my money's on Germany, to be honest. Yeah. I think um, the Spanish are absolutely fantastic. But I think when Chelsea played Barcelona, I think it's pretty common knowledge now. If you put, I think we're quite used to this at Huddersfield, if you, if you put 11 men behind the ball and try and hit them on the break, then the Spanish are quite vulnerable. Mm-hmm. I think the Germans are very strong. I think they're talented. I think they're organised. And although Spain are good, I just can't see beyond Germany. Yeah. But at the same time, you look at England and you think, let's be fair, it's not the best England team, <laughs> but we never do anything. And this year, you know something, you just never, ever know. And I think... For the first time in a long time, there is little expectation of being able to do absolutely anything. And that might help us, because yeah. individually and collectively, it just might drive those players on and think, right, I'm, I'm going to prove to you we can do X, Y, Z. So you never know. England, I think, are the dark horses, mm. but somehow I just cannot see beyond Germany and Spain, especially Germany. I think you're right there with Germany. They are. They're looking terrifying, absolutely terrifying. Yeah, absolutely. But at the same time with Spain, you can sit behind the ball, you can mark them tight, hit them on the break, and you never know, just like Chelsea in Barcelona. But Germany... They've got some fantastic players. They're all young, they're hungry, they're organised, they're strong, they're physical, they're talented. I can't see anybody doing it apart from them, but hey, football's a funny old game, isn't it? This is true. This who, is who would have thought after missing the first three penalties we'd get promotion, but there you go. <laughs> no, I, was, I did have my head in my hands, probably like everybody else, thinking this is it now, we've blown it, but no, no, we came through, we came good in the end. Just before you do go, yeah. Dean, I've got to ask you, do you have a message, obviously, for the town fans that are currently serving away from family and friends on Ops at the moment? Is there anything you'd like to say to those guys that are listening to us right now? Yeah, absolutely, of course there is. It's not just the town fans, it's the guys in general out there as well. What a fun fantastic job and I think sometimes you guys out there it's remote it's thousands of miles away from home but believe you and me you're not forgotten about and unfortunately it was the uh, three guys killed from Huddersfield yeah. that really really hits home I know we had a service at the football club and we invited the family and friends down but that really really hit home and it brought so much more support even more than you can ever imagine but you know you guys are not forgotten about we think about you all the time you watch the news it's well covered and uh, you know doing a sterling job it's probably a job which I wouldn't be brave enough to do so you know uh, thank you to them all you are a gentleman Dean thank you so much I'm, I'm wishing us as a team all the very best of course for the forthcoming season I will see the gal farm in about four weeks when I end of tour and come to buy my shirt excellent well interestingly I think they had our record down Saturday of shirt sales, so it's still warm white, but people want to be part of something. And uh, you know, for the first time in a long time, we've had success. Let's hope the uh, the wave continues and we still ride it. Dean, thanks for joining us. Okay, thank you very much. Bye bye. Afghanistan, Germany, Canada, Northern Ireland, the Middle East, Cyprus, Brunei, Iran, Kenya, Gibraltar, online around the world and throughout the UK, covering the forces world. This is BFBS.